Hey TNT, it's Pastor Ben here. I hope you had a great Christmas last week. I hope that you all are enjoying your break off from school this week and that uh, things went well for Christmas last week. Um, we're going to get back at our sections this week and jump back into section 2.6 for TNT. Um, just want to, I guess, start off with a word of prayer and we'll uh, get going with our lesson for today. Lord, thanks so much for today. I thank you for each of our TNT clubbers and for them tuning in uh, each week to uh, watch the video of the lesson each week. God, I just ask that you would uh, just give us a good time this week, that they would be studying and working on their sections, and Lord, that we'd be able to get back together real soon. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, TNT, our lesson this week, uh, section 2.6, is the Bible is powerful and active. The Bible is powerful and active. You know, your memory verse for this week uh, is Hebrews 4.12, and it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Um, and, and start out, I guess if we're going to talk about the Bible as being living and active, or powerful and active, uh, I guess I want to define what it means for something to be living. I mean, I think sometimes that's something that we take for granted, isn't it? Uh, what does it mean that something is living? And, and maybe the best way to do that is let's just kind of go through some things and we can decide whether they're living or not. Okay, are you ready? Um, how about this guy, this, this cute little puppy running in the field, is he living or not? Well, the puppy is living. The picture isn't living, but the puppy is living. So the thing in the picture, yes, the puppy is living. How about this? These kids, are they living or not living? They are living. They're living. They're living, breathing people. They're human beings. How about this rock? Is that rock living? No. No, the rock itself is not living. The rock is a non-living thing. How about the sports car? What do you think? Living or not living? Well, it moves. But to make it move, you got to start the engine and somebody has to do something to get it to move. It doesn't move on its own. How about this tree? Yes, the tree is living. It's got green, uh, green leaves on it. It is a living tree. What about this? It's a baseball. No, baseball isn't living. Baseball is not living. Uh, you may be like, Pastor Ben, come on, we know what's living and not living. How about that flower? The flower would be a living thing. How about that snowman? Is that snowman a living thing? He's got a smile, he's got a face just like you and me. He's got arms. But the truth is that snowman's not living. The only way that snowman that would be living is Frosty, because but Frosty's a whole different thing, and Frosty's a story. But Frosty moved and lived and interacted with the world around him. You know, if we look at what the definition of living is, something is alive, it's not dead, it's alert and active, it's aware of and responsive to the world around it. You know, sometimes it's hard to describe things that we already know. You know, a tree interacts with the world around it because it takes carbon dioxide in, expels uh, oxygen, it grows. But what about our Bible? I mean, our verse for the day said that God's word is living and active. You know, today we're going to talk about a couple things and, and de describe how God's word is living and active. First is God's word is alive because God is alive. You know, the Bible even says that Jesus is the Word. Okay? God's Word is alive because God is alive. And God talks to us through His Word. Secondly, we're going to look at how because God knows all things, He knows everything about us. Each detail of our lives and thoughts and our actions. You know, so therefore, God's Word is alive. The third thing is that God has given us His Word the Bible, to guide us. His word is powerful, practical, and, and active to help us with everything that comes our way. You know, just to sum things up, the Bible is written by God. He knows exactly what's happening in our lives right now. The Bible is alive and powerful to help you meet the needs in your life. So let's jump into our points for this today. We have three points that we're going to talk about today uh, with God's word being living and active or powerful and active 
The first is that God's word speaks to us now, even though it was written a long time ago. Listen, I don't know if you understand, know how the Bible came to be, but the Bible came to be because God spoke to people years ago and told them what to write down. You know, we read through the Gospels, and God guided people to write the Gospel message. So we knew what happened, so we knew about Jesus' life. God uh, uh, guided the Apostle Paul to write letters to churches. That's why we have some of the New Testament epistles. Uh, but God's Word... God speaks through the Bible. Now, it's not like this. It's not like God takes the Bible and sets it down and he gets little eyes on it and goes, Hey, Pastor Ben, I think you should do this. But God's Word speaks to us by us reading it, by us understanding it. You know, a verse I want to share with you is this. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. This, uh, this may help under, us understand that. The, the Bible being God's Word and speaking to us. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, that's telling us what to do, rebuking, it's like if we got in trouble and we need to fix what we're doing, correcting, showing us the right thing to do instead of the wrong thing we might have been doing, and training in righteousness, helping us learn what are the right things to do. See, even though the Holy Spirit helped people write the Bible a long time ago, it's still true and helpful to us today on how we live our lives. So God's word speaks to us now, even though it was written a long, long time ago. Secondly, God knows everything about us. God knows everything about us. There's a big word that maybe you've heard. It's called omniscient. Omniscient is all knowing. God knows everything. He knows how many hairs are on, or not on my head. He knows what we do. Nobody else knows what we're doing. He knows what gets us excited, what makes us sad. God is all-knowing. You know, it's no surprise that we read through the Bible. There's sometimes that we read, and it feels like God is speaking right to us. It feels like God is just telling us exactly what we should hear, what we need to hear at that time. The reason is He knows us. He knows us as human beings and knows us, knows us personally. See, God knows what, what we struggle with and what makes us happy. Remember your memory verse for this week. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Listen, when we read this, it's easy to think about the Bible like a sword. But you know what? It's a metaphor of what the Bible really does. It really cuts to the heart of where we're at and who, and, and, and who we are. So, God's Word speaks to us now, even though it was written a long time ago. And God knows everything about us. Therefore, God's Word is living and active. God's Word is living and powerful. You know, the Bible will help us with every situation we face if we take time to read it. God's Word will comfort us when we struggle and give wisdom for the choices we face each day. You know, one of the, one of the best uh, explanations of what the Bible really is, is if you take the word Bible, B-I-B-L-E, and it tells us that, and, and what we can use that making an acronym, that the Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible is the instruction booklet that God has given us. You know, God knows everything about us, and as we read his words, he'll show us that he knows what's inside our hearts and minds, even the secret thoughts and sins with which we may struggle. Listen, it doesn't matter how much we try to keep something from God. He knows. He knows. See, God's word is living and active because it helps us with every situation we face if we take time to read it. Listen, we live in a culture today, our world today says if you want to know how to do something, get on YouTube and look it up. Get on Google and Google search it. But you know what? Before Google and YouTube and anything like that, God gave us instructions on how to live life to the best. No, God's Word doesn't tell us how to fix our bike or fix our car, but it tells us about the attitude that we have when we do those things, how we should be loving to other people, how we should um, seek our best to do what's right and not sin. 
God's word is living. God's word is active. God's word is alive and speaks directly to us right where we're at. I pray that this week that you would see that more and more and that that memory verse will become more and more true in your lives. God, thank you for a great week. I just pray for our TNT clubbers this week. Keep them safe, keep them in you, and let them be reading your word to know exactly what you want from them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much and have a great week. We'll see you next week, TNT.